Welcome back to Rugged Made. I'm Jared, and I'm here with Jake from Dude Ranch DIY. How's it going, everybody? So Jake's been visiting with us, and we've been having a lot of fun playing with all the different machines. And one of the most common questions we get from folks is trying to figure out, you know, what are the differences and pros and cons between this style of splitter, which is what we would call a horizontal vertical or tip-up splitter, and this style of splitter, which is a horizontal or a push-through log splitter. So we've got the advantage of having uh, Jake here. He's, he's kind of a splitting pro. So we thought it'd be a good topic to discuss and kind of we can feel our way through and figure out, you know, when does one make sense versus the other? So yeah, Jake, absolutely. You, you've operated both kinds of machines. I mean, you have one of our early 700 series and I think your first splitter was more of this style. So yes. kind of when people, when this question comes up with you, what do you usually say? Um, I think there's obvious uh, pros and cons to, to both, as you kind of said. Um, I think if you're more of a homeowner splitting firewood for yourself and you're not looking for the you know super high production or to you know maximize your time as much and you just enjoy splitting or you're maybe just by yourself I think this machine is a great alternative to a push through style splitter yeah. mostly because if you have the small nice rounds that you can easily pick up you can use it in that horizontal really ergonomic position yep but if you have large rounds like the ones standing next to me um, you can also have it in that vertical position that it just was and you don't have to worry about you know having to somehow pick them up or have another person there to help you get it into this um, horizontal position, which which is really nice if you are by yourself or limited in your you know equipment resources. Yeah, and I think raising equipment resources is a great point. Some people who have expressed an interest in a horizontal machine, which pretty much has to have a log lift. Um, sometimes people say, but but I've got a Bobcat, or I've got, I mean, you've got a Kubota tractor. Yeah. Uh, we've got the John Deere here on the ranch. Um, so we've had people say, you know what? I like those features, but I like to bring my logs right up to the splitter in the bucket of my tractor. Right. So it's not like um, we try to convince people that they need to have a log lift to get the job done. Mm -hmm. So between the vertical position that we just saw this in, I mean, that, that log, no one's lifting that up yeah. into, into this position. <laughs> right. And I think if you don't have a tractor or a piece of equipment to bring a massive log like this too, it's fairly easy to just, as you're doing right here, as I'm talking, popping it up, and then you can just roll this log right over to it, plop it down, It'll bust it up into four uh, pieces with this nice uh, four-way wedge, yeah. and then you're off to the races. And even it, once you quarter it up or you know, maybe split it up into eighths, you can go back and flip it back to that horizontal position once you have manageable pieces. That way you're not bending down or sitting on a five-gallon bucket or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it is nice to have the machine up at waist height. Both of these machines are, you know, right around average waist height, so you're not really hunched over too much. Right. Now, what about the horizontal? Because that's what you went with for your production, and you're doing a mix, I think, of home heating and you're selling firewood. Right. Now, I mean, the horizontal push-through style, I think, definitely has some features that are nice to have that this style splitter just can't have based on its horizontal vertical nature. Mm. Um, one of the biggest is obviously having this log lift. Um, if you're looking for the higher production, uh, you know, maximizing your time, you can load up this log lift with one massive round and break it into multiple pieces, throw all those pieces back onto here, and they're right here within arm's reach to be able to send through the splitter. Yeah. Or if you're working with smaller wood, where this style splitter in the horizontal orientation really shines, you can stack up 10, 15 rounds right here on this lift send them through one time and you know you just push them through it makes a lot of firewood really quick another nice really f really nice feature that i like to have is this log catch tray because when you do send through a big round and it breaks it into four pieces um, this log catch tray catches all four of those pieces that way you don't have to then go bend down and pick them up off the ground just to get them back up here you know they're already there and it gives you a little bit of leeway as far as um you know having having to move the pieces from here to here, you know, because it can hold quite a bit of material at once. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we know a lot of people like to put uh, a cart, you know, a little garden trailer or mm -hmm. uh, even a conveyor at the foot of this and right. get into kind of a, a process. Yeah. Uh, and it can be very efficient. And um, I think that's where this machine really shines if you are looking for that higher production um, because of the catch tray. Um, you know, you're able to have a tractor bucket or a conveyor or a dump trailer or something right at the end of it and it just pushes the wood in. 
Yeah. So I, I think we, we've talked numerous times about productivity, and I think that's about you know how much throughput, how, how many cord can you split per hour given X number of people, and what kind right. of wood you have. Um, and I think that does matter for a lot of people, especially mm -hmm. people who are doing uh, mm -hmm. you know heating like a, their own big barn or garage or selling the wood. Yep. Um, you know, time is money, and that matters. Uh, and I think where a lot of the speed and efficiency comes from on a machine like this is the fact that you got a push plate pushing against the blade. And after that split, you just go right to the next split. You don't have to handle it again. Right. And as you know, some of our viewers can see in some of our other videos, when we are splitting with the 500 series, after that split, you still have to take handle a that log again. A little bit more fumbling around and stuff. And yeah. a point that you brought up is, you know, how many people you have working with you. I think yeah. if you consistently have multiple people working with you, this style splitter is nice because as people have probably seen in my videos, I'll be running the splitter and I'll have a second person there keeping this uh, log lift tray, you know, loaded with wood, ready to go. Whether it's already split pieces that need to be resplit, or just loading it up with, uh, you know, smaller rounds to keep the process moving. Yeah, but you know, uh, when I when I started talking about it with uh, having to handle the log again or the pieces uh, on that machine again uh, to put them somewhere, it sounds inefficient. But then I realized that a lot of times you have to handle it to get it into a car anyway. That's very or some true. people stack, some people, some people split right near where they stack. Mm -hmm. And one of our upcoming videos is actually going to be kind of a how to stack, uh, where we'll be showing a few different options for stacking wood. So again, it really depends on each person's setup, how much wood they're trying to split per year, um, where they split and where they stack. So, um, which is why I think it's a fair question. I'm glad we got a chance to talk about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. It's really not a matter of, in all situations, one machine is more effective than the other. No, it, it's definitely not. Each machine shines in different areas, um, and I think it's all based on you know what type of splitting you're doing, how often you're splitting, the size of trees around you, and uh, you know how many people you have. Yeah, um, so. and and one thing that you really can't ignore is is people's budget. Right. Uh, the machine, uh, like the 500 series, you know that horizontal vertical, it doesn't need as much equipment. Fewer valves, fewer hoses. Uh, fewer, less metal, so it is a, a little bit simpler, and that allows it to be more affordable for some folks who just don't need all the features of a machine like this. Absolutely. And that's why it's still in the lineup and still serves people very well. Well, I think that covers a lot of the considerations that you know people should be thinking about when they're trying to make their decision about you know, which of these styles of machines is, is right for them. Definitely. And uh, it's really helpful to have you come up and, and talk to us about it, Jake. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, it's been my pleasure. Yeah, so be sure to check out Jake's channel, Dude Ranch DIY. And uh, we'll hopefully we'll have some more videos coming out with Jake soon. For sure. Thanks for having me, Jared. All right.